very good morning to everyone and welcome to our session on transactional net margin method my name is gaurav garg and i am from j garg economic advisors we are in we are based out of new delhi so let me start a session we have already discussed three transfer pricing methods comparable and controlled price resale price method and third cost plus method the methods that we have already discussed they belong to traditional transfer pricing methods and today we are discussing transactional profit method or say one of the transactional profit method that is transactional net margin method there are two transactional profit based method one is tra this uh, transactional net margin method and second is profit split method today we will going to discuss transactional net margin method and on monday we are going to discuss profit split method so what is transactional net margin method and how it is beneficial in our uh, transcribing documentation as the name suggests you know transactional net margin so in transactional net margin method we need to compute net margin earned from a transaction just wait for a moment right the screen is moving okay uh, so in transactional net margin method we need to compute net margin earned from a transaction which transaction net margin earned from a controlled transaction so what do you mean by controlled transaction controlled transaction is a transaction between two related parties two group companies two associated enterprises so when you are buying goods from your related party when you are supplying goods to them we need to compute net margin earned in this transaction and more importantly uh, when we say transactional lot margin net margin method uh, i hope all of you are observing we are saying transactional lot margin method and we are not saying company net margin method so even if you have got lot of operations if you are if you have got a company you need not take net profit earned by that company what matters in trans in this method in transactional net margin method is net margin earned from a transaction and not net margin of a company what is net margin net margin is equivalent to the operating profit and operating profit is gross profit divided by oh, sorry gross profit less your uh, other valued expenditure other operating expenditure and that gives you net margin so in this method we are discussing or we we are finding the relevance of net margin whereas if you go back to our earlier to method that is resale price method and cost plus method at that time we were discussing about the relevance of gross profit so from gross profit we have shifted to net profit and this net profit you know because it takes care of all the expenditures above it all the operating expenditure cost of goods sold your operating income so net profit my dear friends is very sensitive in comparison to your gross profit so net profit can be impacted by a lot many factors in comparison to gross profit so what you need to ensure that the functional comparability is there correct so do do journally everyone says the tnmm or transactional net margin method takes care of functional differences but what kind of functional differences it is very important to understand see net margin method or this transactional net margin method again you know like cpm and cost plus method is ensuring return based on your you know the functions performed by you so it's technically a method applicable wherein the tested party is a least complex entity means the entity is not taking any significant risk not not have employed any significant assets because if what need to uh, we we need to generate return or we need to give return based on the net uh, the the function performed by the tested party and if the tested party is performing those kind of functions which are generating intangible assets then the return is not only pertains to 
the your transaction whether the return also pertains to the intangibles generated by those functions so let's say if the entity is involved in hiring a celebrity to market the product and that risk for marketing is also uh, taken by that entity then in this case applying TNMM may not give appropriate results because now this entity is taking marketing risk that entity is generating marketing intangible so now the return this entity will get is a return not only on the transaction but return also on the marketing functions correct now when we move on to identify the comparables we need to we need to find comparables operating in similar industry uh, and they are broadly comparables with regard to functions as it and risk but we need to keep in mind the function as it and risk should not be leading to generation of intangible assets they should not be leading to assumption of significant risk now in TNMM uh, while computing operating income and operating expense what all we can consider in operating income you should exclude your interest income your dividend income any other abnormal income that you have won during the year which does not pertain to transaction similarly while computing your operating expenditure you need to exclude your interest expenditure your non operating expenditure your one time expenditure your abnormal expenditure and technically it is generally ebit your earning before interest and tax so you must be wondering you know on one side gaurav is talking about taking transactional net margin and on the other side he is talking about t by e e b i t that is earning before interest and tax so friends you know we also follow the principle of aggregation while computing the margin or while benchmarking the transactions so if your client has entered into similar kind of transactions during the year they can be aggregated and then it can be benchmarked for example your your client is involved in manufacturing manufacturing for aes so throughout the year they are, they are involved in manufacturing of various products so what we can do we can club all them and benchmark the net margin earned by that manufacturing entity uh, you know combining all the cost and we can simply take the ebit of that manufacturing entity but wherein the transaction uh, wherein your uh, the client is involved in providing services to both uh, a and non a in such a case some problem in the stand okay so wherein uh, your client is involved in providing services to both associated enterprises and to non associated enterprises it is important first to bisect the pnl into the transactions with a and transactions with non a so what you need to benchmark is the profit earned from transactions with a and not the profits earned with transactions from non a so this can lead to internal comparable so you know we we have two segments in front of us one wherein we have rendered services or manufacturing services to our group companies or to associated enterprises is one segment on another side we have a segment wherein we are rendering services to uh, non associated enterprises so this is a second segment so now the question comes whether we can compare these these two segments if we can compare these two segments then we can compare the profitability also and based on internal comparable we can benchmark the transaction in another case wherein you cannot compare these two segments or you do not have second segment altogether we need to look for external comparable using various databases various databases which are available in the open market uh, as far as india is concerned includes your progress capital line HTP and in international we have a Medias, we have one source to find the comparables. So once 
So we are able to benchmark the transaction either uh, internally or using externally uh, under TNMM we can justify ourselves. So though the TNMM is a very popular method but it needs to be applied very carefully because you know it gets affected by a lot of factors. Let's take another example. Uh, let's say you have uh, now, you did some marketing function towards the end of the year, let's say towards uh, the March, correct? And you, f you follow accounting period from April to March. So when you have incurred expenditure in March towards the marketing, uh, but you are not able to get return, you know, commensurate with those marketing operations in that month. So what will happen? The profitability will dip, but you will have a profitability you will not have the expenditure in the next year, but you will have the profitability. So one thing we need to remember when we talk about T and MM and the net margin, it is based on the principle that the return over the period will going to be normal. You know, the, if there is any abnormality in the uh, P and L or in your operations or in your return, it will going to average out over the period. So ideally, we should try to see profits for three to four years and then benchmark but that may not be permitted uh, in your jurisdiction for example India talks about single year benchmarking so we need to justify the current year profit you know along and then compare it with the comparable profit in comparable profits we can take three years profit or two years profit depending upon country to country but what I'm trying to highlight by doing the analysis of profitability of your tested party for two to three years you can find whether the results are normal or there is some abnormality in the return and if there is some abnormality in the return of the tested party ideally we should <laughs> Hello? as far as comparables are concerned again we need to we need to we, did, we need to do the analysis for two to three years, find whether there is any abnormality in the margins of comparables or not. If there is abnormality, try to remove those abnormality from the PNL of those comparables. Otherwise, the comparison may not give the appropriate results. And technically, it would be wrong so you can get caught you know, in the transcribing scrutiny. So better to remove this abnormality and then compare your profit okay so now we are on the last part of uh, our discussion what profit level indicator we should take so TNMM gives the benefit or gives the leverage or gives the flexibility to take various uh, profit level indicators we can take operating profit by sales that is operating margin we can take net cost plus margin operating profit by total operating cost or we can take barry ratio operating profit by value added expenditure or we can also take uh, return on assets so let's quickly discuss what is the benefit of each of the pli and in which case these plis would be applicable so first pli let's discuss is operating margin so operating margin the pli is operating profit by net sales so it is generally applicable when you are having or when your tested party is having uh, purchase transactions or you know the transactions are in the expense and uh, you are making sales to independent parties so we can benchmark in this case by using op by sales and second thing uh, very important thing we need to keep in mind is assets are not playing any significant role in the operations so two things you know if you are having transactions with your group companies in the nature of expenditure. Second, if your assets are not playing significant role, then OP my sales could be a good uh, benchmark or to good PLI. Now, in comparison to OP by sales, we have another PLI very closely related that is Berry Ratio. In Berry Ratio, what we do, we take operating profit and divide it by value added expenditure. Value added expenditure uh, is your operating expense but does not include your cost of goods sold. So it is generally applicable in distribution transactions and more importantly when you have different comparables available but the functions performed by those comparables are not commensurate with the net sales. So you know uh, if one entity is selling a product of $1000 another entity is selling a product of $100 uh, the function intensity could be different. So Berry ratio 
technically finds the return based on the functional intensity so in case of distributions and uh, you know when you have different set of comparables you can actually see the return on the functional comparability i also personally believe you know wherein the inventor risk is less there also berry ratio uh, becomes a very significant tool to benchmark the transaction third pli could be net cost plus margin so net cost plus margin uh, is generally applicable when you are making sales to your group companies or sales to your related party when you are earning income from your related party so you take operating profit by net cost net cost of operations and it does not include any abnormal cost fourth uh, return on asset return on asset is primarily applicable when you are generating uh, or when your assets are playing significant role in case uh, in, in your operation so let's say you are a warehousing company or you are into logistics then the return on asset could be a very uh, good benchmark uh, or good pli to benchmark your return uh, with this i need to finish my session on tnmm and if you have any queries feel free to ask i would be happy to reward okay so we have got one query from ishleen bawa which says can you tell a brief about beps uh, so this session is not for beps and we will going to have a dedicated session on beps but in short beps is base erosion profit shifting it is the uh, oecd has already come out with the 15 action point on beps and india being part of g20 is signatory to it in india we have already introduced the indian government has already introduced two important components of beps one is your equalization levy second is your country by country reporting and uh, along with country by country reporting we the india is in the process of uh, changing the transparency documentation structure so we will going to have three kind of files one is your master file second is your local file and third is your country by country reporting actually we will going to have dedicated session on beps so do join when we will be discussing the beps any other question okay so let me take uh, uh you know let me say bye to you and see you back in our next sessions thank you